Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, and Charles kickoff moments away. Quickly, what are you watching in this one? The offensive line for both teams, because both teams have a terrific pass rush. They've got to keep their passers upright. If they have a chance to do that, they can both thrive on offense and move the ball downfield. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Detroit! Detroit! Ah! On the ground, this is Saquon Barkley. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll make it second and 12. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Now Jackson on second down. Flush to his right. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Now it's Jackson, and incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Here we go on fourth down with Jackson. And he fires one that's intercepted. Deion Sanders, the former Falcon, with him. And they will finally get him, but not until he's all the way down inside the 15-yard line. That's an experienced DB picking off a rookie, and you know sometimes those experienced DBs, they love going against the young pups, don't they? And I go back to the offseason, had a quick conversation with him about, hey, when you play younger quarterbacks, what's it like for you? And he says, it's like being a boxer. I get a lot of different angles, a lot of different looks, and a lot of times I just bait the young guy. And there he baited him right into the interception. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. So it's third and goal. And now the question, can this Falcon defense stand tall once more? Gurley. Take this one in for the Seattle touchdown. Todd Gurley, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks have taken a first quarter lead. Extra point up and through by Myers. And it's now a 7-0 game. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. down carry for Barkley and he'll fight forward to about the 27 yard line just a yard on the first down carry so it's second and nine 
They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now he's going to throw deep right side. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Justin Reed. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, look at that, Chuck. A rookie picked the rookie on that play. How about that? Is that rookie on rookie crime? <laughs> but you know what happens, too. If you're a rookie defender, you tend to adjust to the game a little bit quicker than if you're a quarterback. Too many things still going through his mind. And on that play, the rookie defender won the battle. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. Now Vic stripped, he lost the football. And the Falcons grab it. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. When I see a play like that, I come back to risk-reward. I don't know about you, but is it worth it at that point, whatever you're going to pick up, to either take the hit, and in this case, lose the football. So should have gone down. I mean, hindsight's always 20-20, but that's the same play. You're exactly right. Hindsight's really never wrong, is it? Because you can analyze it, but I think ultimately you got to look at it as a first option, taking care of the ball, getting what you can, and that's it. Don't worry about it anymore. Now, the first play of the drive there is incomplete. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Jackson now on second and 10. And here's another interception, the third of this first quarter. Brian Dawkins, the safety with a pick. And this one will be brought back to the 22. And that was a young pup, the rookie, being intercepted by a veteran DB. And I loved our quick conversation in pregame with him on the field where he said, hey, look, I love playing these young quarterbacks. They don't know a whole lot yet, so I can use my mind to put me in a position to make a play. Oh, and now he bowls him over, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him, that full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Second down, Vic. Over the middle, Julian Edelman, it's complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A very solid gain of 27. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Hey, let's go! Help, help. Second down throw for Vic. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Desmond King there on the coverage. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. Third down, Vic. Now he'll escape to his right. That is caught at the seven. 
And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. On first and goal, Gurley. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. Working out of the gun, Michael Vick. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Touchdown Seahawks. Todd Gurley with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early. Probably not very deep into the... And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Lawrence Taylor in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. From the gun, Jackson. Man open, that's Calvin Ridley. The 40, the 30, 10... Touchdown, Falcons! Calvin Ridley taking it in. And the Falcons are able to show off their quick strike ability. They were already down two scores early. They needed something to try to stem that tide, and that certainly qualifies a big play to get them in the end zone. It qualifies indeed because, let's face it, they don't get something done on this drive, turn it back over. This game could be 88 and out the gate early. What? 88 and out the gate? Yeah. Oh, what's that? Well, listen, I used to hear my old man talk about it. Usually meant that thing's done. Oh, well, now that they got the touchdown, it's, it's not 88 and out the gate. We still got a good game going ahead of us. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Being chased out left. To the left side and complete for Julian Edelman. A good pick up there, a 22. On any given pass play, you never know exactly where your exit points are going to be. On this play, it was flushed to his left, still on the run, able to accurately throw the football for a nice first down. Buying time to his left. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A minute 58 to go in this first half of play. We're back to Atlanta right after this timeout. A first down throw coming for Vic. Over the middle here to Brown. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. And we see Tim Brown there flashing the ability that made him a member of both the college and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Received the gold jacket from the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2015. Brandon, I don't know if you remember this. When he played in the Cotton Bowl, when he was at Notre Dame after he won the Heisman, right. he was such a marked guy that after a punt return or a catch, can't remember which, one of the Texas A&M players after the tackle, they took his towel out of his pants and ran to the sideline with it like it was a souvenir. <laughs> you know how competitive Tim Brown is? He jumped up, chased the guy down, tackled him. And he'll go down, brought down at the 20-yard line. Bobby Wagner in there to 
bring him down for a loss of seven. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try to take you out of that. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. And now a timeout defensively by the Falcons. As the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. First and second down were a disaster. Both went backwards. Now it's third and 18. They need something big. From the shotgun, it's Vic. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Julian Edelman, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. They went empty backfield, all their weapons out wide, so there, were, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do. No secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, people bring pressure at you. They managed to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass. Myers connects on the PAT, and it's now 21-7. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Lawrence Taylor. And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. As the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. So after the sack, here's second and 14. Jackson from the shotgun. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. 23 yards on the play. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half God, number God. one. God. On first and ten, it's Jackson. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As it'll come with 15 God. seconds to play God. in the first half. Now Jackson on first down, steps away to his left. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. We. You want the third quarter already? No problem, let's do it. And we welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon getting set for quarter number three here. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their clip. Well, he cannot get away. Down goes Vic. They need to stop to get back into this game, and here's one right to start the third quarter. Yeah, anytime you go to the lockers with that two, three score deficit, you're right. You need that stop, get the football back, and they've done just that. Series to series, play to play. And the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. From the gun, Vic. Over the middle, he's got Tim Brown. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. One thing I can say pretty safely, 
that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. On third down, Vic out of the gun. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. On first down, they go option to the right. Finding room inside the 40. And finally taken down at the 20-yard line. A big-time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. And that was a nice, strong run by the guy they called the field general. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. Here's Michael Vick. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Bobby Wagner in there to get him for his second sack of the night. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off by Jamal Adams. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. And he's going to go down. Back in his own five-yard line, it's a sack. Lawrence Taylor in there to get him again. The third time he sacked him here tonight. Now, right, following now, the sack, the they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Go on, go on, go on. From the gun, it's Jackson. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by Quan Alexander. And he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. This D wanted to put it away before we even get to the fourth quarter, widening that margin a bit further. And while they won't just empty the bench just yet, if you're a backup, start loosening up. I think you'll get a chance to play before this one is over now with that type of a cushion. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is taken about seven yards deep. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They'll start out on the ground at Saquon Barkley. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. And incomplete here, so a little razzle-dazzle on that one, but they couldn't hook up, and it's third down. Watch it now, Barney, Barney! Ah! On third down, Jackson, and the Seahawk defense gets to him, and they bring him down. Lawrence Taylor in there again. My goodness, that is now his fourth sack tonight. Now let's see how the offense still out there. They elect to go on fourth and 11. They'll indeed go for it with Jackson. It's caught. Jones. Fourth down conversion plays. You usually think one, two, three yards, maybe ten. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Throwing now, Jackson on first down, and that is incomplete. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. 
What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. Marty, Marty. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. Jackson now. Now he's going to let it go deep right sideline. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Sometimes we wonder about play calls, but this one made perfect sense to me. He's got the only touchdown that they've scored in this game. Tried to get it to him again on another deep ball. And he's got a man, Calvin Ridley. And he's taken down inside the 30. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. Jackson on first down. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 38. John Randall. Breaking through to get him for a loss of seven. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing Jackson, second and a bundle. Now it's Jackson. Throw right side caught by Ridley. Touchdown, Falcons! Calvin Ridley, his second touchdown of the night. And the Falcons get a bit closer. He has his two scores, but still a sizable deficit in this game. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. Oh, the Falcons got it. Yep, Atlanta football. Well, that certainly makes things more interesting. You get the score, then you get the onside kick. A little uphill battle still, but a start. It's not mission accomplished, but the plan is working. They are in a great spot right now, and the best part, they put the defense right back out on the field after having already scored. Yeah, they've got the momentum here now. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. The left side completion to Jones. And yeah, they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A good pick up there of 20 yards. This quarterback now. A perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. Here's Jackson. Forced out to his left. The ball comes out. And this is going to get out of bounds. So they will gain a bit of yardage on the play, actually. And they'll hold on to the football as well. Now to admit, partner, that I've often thought that I don't like this rule. Where the offensive player fumbles the ball, it goes out of bounds. And they get to keep it. <laughs> that's just because you're a defensive guy. That's why you don't like it. Yeah, you're right. It is a slanted view, isn't it? But that's this is where, for the offensive team, the sideline is their friend. Usually it's not their friend. Yeah, exactly right. I actually played for a guy in college. You know what he used to name the sideline? Right, now, Sammy. Sammy sideline and use him well. Jackson looking to throw on third. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The interception woes, they just continue to mount. He's thrown five picks. At this point, you got to be thinking, is it something between the ears? I think a confidence hit does occur once you start getting those numbers up there a little bit. But as you and I both know, it's not always just one guy's fault. Maybe somebody ran the wrong pattern. Maybe some balls were tipped. It could be so many different things. Bottom line, though, it comes back to the guy throwing it. So here's Vic following the interception. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And he's able to get this one up to the eight-yard line this time. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play. And that'll make it third and 13. They were looking for a cushion from that end zone. He gave it to him, 15 big yards. That is an absolute backbreaker. That was a design passing play, wasn't a draw. You think you got him stopped, good coverage downfield, and he's able to pick up the first with his legs. Defensively, 
That kicks into your psyche and hurts a little bit, doesn't it? It certainly does, and, and here's the thing. Anytime you give up a first down, it hurts you psychologically, but it hurts more when they get it this way because you've covered everything. He didn't have any place to throw the football. He takes off running and picks it up anyway, and now you have to stay on the field for an extra set of downs. And really could have used that stop trailing here in the fourth. No, no, no. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Now they're going to throw it here with Vic. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Bobby Wagner bringing the pressure again, and that is his third sack here tonight. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. By 90, by 20. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. As an inside linebacker, got to be a little bit more poised. No doubt about it, because they get a little bit of flexibility, especially when they're trying to stuff a gap. You know, we get that double A gap look. This time, he got too eager and got too deep into the backfield. Second down, Vic rolling to his left. And he lets go a laser pull in by Edelman. And out across midfield, down to the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, yeah. drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right Eagle, there Eagle. to move the sticks. Eagle, Eagle. On first and ten, here's Vic. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. He was looking for Julian Edelman that time. And now it's second down. that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Third and long for Vic. And he'll have his man. That's Edelman. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. And how about that throw? We saw a combination of elite arm strength and obviously, the ability to move the sticks with that completion. But it's the way that he throws the ball. So compact, yet the ball comes off of his hand, and it just whistles to the receiver. A really nice gain of 25 yards. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Despite the late lead, Vic's going to throw. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. Good coverage that time by the linebacker, Deion Jones. All right, everybody in the house had to figure that was going to be a one-yard plunge. I know I was fooled. How about you? <laughs> Absolutely. I had to readjust my eyes when it was a play. Good job defensively, though, to not bite. Too bad that didn't end the series. They stopped it. 